Good evening, everyone. The time is now 6 p.m. and it's time to start. Can everyone make their way to their seats, please? Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the State Road 33 Safety Improvements Public Hearing. My name is Megan Owens and I am the project manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. Members of the project team who will be presenting information during the hearing are Dennis Atkins and Amanda Ashby. I will now turn it over to our moderator for the evening. project and provide input. This hearing is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-685-1. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box, then click send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public hearing. Click the handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this hearing, please type the issue into the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar to report it. Send an email to carolyn.fitzwilliam at dot.state.fl.us to report it or call 407 637 7461. Staff will do their best to assist you. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by June 27, 10 days after the public hearing, will become part of the project's public hearing record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the hearing. This public hearing is being recorded. A verbatim transcript will be made of all oral proceedings. A recording of this presentation will be posted on the project's webpage within one week following the hearing. There are multiple ways to submit comments or questions. You can make verbal or spoken comments. If attending in person, please fill out a speaker request card so we will know you wish to speak at the podium during the public comment period. Online participants that requested to speak when registering will be called upon during the public comment period of the public hearing. If you did not request to speak earlier and wish to speak, type your name and I wish to speak in the question pane on the GoToWebinar control panel. When your name is called, you will need to unmute yourself on the GoToWebinar control panel before speaking. Lastly, if attending as a dial-in participant, you can call the project manager at 386-943-5140 to provide verbal comments after the public hearing. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you can complete a printed comment form. If you are participating online, you can submit written comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments can also be submitted on the project website at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-685-1. You can also contact the project manager directly by email at megan.owens at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, Deland, Florida 32720. 
This contact information is also available on the public hearing notification that you may have received by mail. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Sewanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4753, or email at Jacqueline.Paramore at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the hearing notifications. This public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's Public Notices website, the Orlando Sentinel Lake Edition, and on social media and on the project webpage at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445-685-1. In addition, Adjacent property owners, interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public hearing. The project is located along State Road 33 from south of Edgewood Boys Ranch Road to State Road 50 in Lake County. This project will provide safety improvements along five sections of State Road 33. Section 1 is located at the Edgewood Boys Ranch Road intersection. Section 2 is at Pine Island Road or County Road 565B intersection. Section three is the Groveland Airport Road intersection area. Section four begins near Metz Road and extends north to Magnolia Street. Section five is located at the State Road 50 and State Road 33 intersection. The project falls within unincorporated Lake County and the city of Groveland. The purpose is to construct safety improvements in accordance with a corridor safety study completed in August 2019. These improvements include widening paved shoulders through curves in the roadway, installing audible pavement markings to alert drivers if a vehicle travels outside of the travel lane, adding a left turn from southbound State Road 33 to Pine Island Road, reconstructing the traffic signals at the State Road 50 intersection, and constructing a traffic separator with a northbound left turn from Wright Street to State Road 50. Section 1 extends from just south to just north of Edgewood Boys Ranch Road. To improve safety through this curved section of State Road 33, the proposed improvement is to resurface the existing roadway and widen the paved shoulders from 4 feet to 6 feet. Other improvements include minor roadside grading and drainage modifications, as well as improved driveway connections at Edgewood Boys Ranch Road. Section 2 extends from just south to north of Pine Island Road or County Road 565B. The proposed safety improvement is to widen State Road 33 to provide dedicated left turn lanes on both northbound and southbound State Road 33 at the Pine Island Road intersection. Other enhancements will be to resurface the existing roadway, the addition of six foot paved shoulders, roadside grading, and drainage modifications. Section three extends from south of to north of Groveland Airport Road. To improve safety through this curved section of State Road 33, the proposed improvement is to resurface the existing roadway and widen the paved shoulders from four feet to six feet. Other improvements include minor roadside grading and drainage modifications, as well as improved intersection connections at Groveland Airport Road. Section four begins near Metz Road and extends north to Magnolia Street. The safety improvement through this section of State Road 33 is to provide new street lighting along the west side of the roadway. 
Section 5 is for safety improvements to the State Road 50 and State Road 33 signalized intersection. Improvements include updating the traffic signals and signal poles, as well as adding new pedestrian signals. New intersection lighting will also be provided. A four-foot traffic separator will be constructed between Wright Street and State Road 50 as part of the plan to repurpose the existing bi-directional median turn lane into a northbound left turn lane only. New sidewalk and ADA pedestrian ramps will be constructed in all corners of the intersection. The proposed sidewalk ADA ramp upgrades may require modifications to existing drainage, and the roadway will be resurfaced from Wright Street through the entire intersection. We'll now enter the formal public comment period for this project. Anyone desiring to make a verbal statement regarding the project will now have the opportunity to speak. Please note, to ensure all who wish to speak are able to, all comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the public hearing. Remember, if you want to leave a verbal comment or question over the phone, call the FDOT project manager at 386-943-5140 after the meeting. Again, you can provide verbal comments and questions in one of multiple ways. To comment at the in-person location, you can state your comments at the microphone. You will need to submit a speaker request card if you have not already done so. If you are joining us online, use the GoToWebinar control panel. If you did not request to speak when you registered for the hearing, you can request to speak by typing in the question box on the control panel. The last way to comment verbally is to call the project manager at 386-943-5140 after the public hearing during normal business hours. We will now call upon in-person participants who have requested to speak. Please come to the microphone when your name is called and state your name and property address. If you represent an organization, a municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comment to three minutes. Please keep in mind that we will be responding to all comments in writing following the meeting. The first speaker card is for Tony McCoy. You can bring the baby. Um, thank you. I'm um, in favor of this uh, safety improvement. It's only one thing that I would add. Uh, I'm the senior pastor of Hope International Church, multicultural church, about 600 plus members. Um, and coming south down 33, State Road 33, right now we don't have a left turning lane into uh, our church campus. Uh, and right now we are also currently um, building a community gymnasium. So with the, the attendance of 600 plus, plus the addition of the community gymnasium, uh, I think it'll be to the best um, safety for the members and all the Groveland citizens to probably to put in a left turning lane. Uh, right now, all the members or anyone coming to um, visit our campus, they have to go in the median almost and stay there as trucks and cars pass by. And that's, that's anybody that's coming there to turn left. Uh, that's law enforcement officers or members of our church so I, I wanted to request on behalf of uh, myself, Hope International Church and our members, and also future visitors to our campus, because uh, community gymnasium in, in our school, thank you, thank you. We have a school as well from grades uh, uh, three, grade, what, kindergarten to 12. Uh, so in the morning, all of them have to go into the medium to make that left turn. So if you guys could consider that, I think it'll be best for the safety of of the citizens of Groveland. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, up next, Eric Williams. Thank you all. Um, I pretty much have the same argument. <laughs> um, I own Groveland Airport and we have accidents there pretty much weekly or bi-weekly. Um, no turn lane, 
um, the speed traffic picks up to 60 miles an hour, half a block right before our driveway. Um, we're getting busier and busier over there with Amazon and all the businesses around the area. We're getting helicopters and people flying in more. We're starting to use it more as a real airport, running into a lot of uh, situations. I mean, I almost got wiped out yesterday on my motorcycle coming into the same place. Um, cars passing, you know, while we're trying to turn in. Really need to consider putting in a left turn lane just to give us a a way out to get us out of the direction of traffic. So it's it's pretty dangerous in there. Okay, thank you. Robert Proper. You saw me question myself, right? It's just proper to say proper. That's okay. all. Um, so a few things and the turn lane into Hope International is critical. Um, there's really a lot of traffic issues there and it's a, I think it is a big safety issue that can be avoided by adding that. Um, I can't quite see it from here, obviously, but the, the green at, at the intersection of 50 and 33, it looks like we're adding a hard median in there. That's, uh, I'm not sure what the technical term is, but the bloom at the end. Um, currently, if you use that intersection, people will be, especially trucks, we have so many truck traffic here. People are using that intersection all the way down for all the truck traffic heading um, northbound. I think this is going to create a big problem with backup and flow. We already have Magnolia, so you've got um, Gray Middle School, and then you've got Magnolia Street, which is on the south side of Gray. You've already got, and especially now we're out of school, but during school sessions, that traffic is already backing up uh, and it's creating safety hazards today. I think if you're, that median is going to create even more so because right now what's happening is they're using improperly, but they're using that striped center section for additional queuing, and, and we're gonna be cutting that queuing off. Um, I really question, and first of all, I don't know what the timing is. Does anyone have, and I'm running out of time here, but the timing of this uh, this rework, what, what is the timing of this? Eric, do you remember the production date? The end of next year, okay. Is there a reason we're not go ahead and adding the third lane here now and taking some of that property from racetrack, creating a right turn lane, creating a straight lane and creating an extended left turn lane? Um, I really think you need to, I know racetrack, I hate it, but I really think you need to, to, to cut that intersection back and and, not, and cut that, that turn, that left turn lane into, um, into the racetrack out because, again, just the amount of traffic that's going northbound. We'll include all of that when we provide you with the response. Oh, okay, and, that, and I don't know if this is a back and forth or if this is just regurgitation of my, my information here, but um, so the timing of the lights, obviously we're working, you know, we've been working for several years on getting the reroute done. Um, you know, this intersection doesn't look very modified as especially as it compares to what we were hoping for uh sooner than later with the reroute um and then well that the, the other thing is again the the interaction but i really feel like we need three lanes at this intersection going northbound to accommodate the huge amount of traffic you will be backed up i don't know what the exact distance is i'm going to say it's at least a quarter of a mile from 33 to Magnolia today. Uh, and our traffic, as everyone knows, is just growing and growing and growing. We got kids crossing there, lots of safety hazards. So I'm over time, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, one more, okay, Jason Lee. Yeah, I just want to reiterate what he just said, because we live on Oak Drive and there are times at certain times of the day, you can even hardly get out there. And that it might look like a good idea on on paper, but that's going to create more havoc, more mess 
then. And I'm friends with a lot of people at Hope. They've told me the same thing. They have trouble. We have trouble. There's times that during the day when that's backed up all the way past our road. That's not that's just gonna make it worse. So I don't know what you have to do, but I agree with him. It's gotta be wider. Whatever you have to do to do that, because just cutting the lane off, there's too much traffic. Trucks coming up 33. I don't know if anybody goes out there. We live here. It's just crazy at times. And a couple of trucks, two or three trucks, and you can forget about it. And then the light, so we always go around, you know, but I don't know how to fix it other than widen it, fix the timing and better lighting. But yeah, that pretty much is, I agree with everything he said and those guys before that everything else, all the other ones, they're perfect. They need that, the turning lanes and, and everything to make it less dangerous for people, for sure. As people go down that road, and that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. John Rigdoon. Rigdon. I'm in the school zones when school's in every day. Um, two turn lanes would be great. The problem is I don't think you have enough room there for another lane. Um, it backs up. I don't think a, a positive wall is going to make a difference right there because in the where Robert's talking about the queuing section, there's really no, it's not enough room for a car. So I don't know what the answer for y'all is unless you take some people's property to both sides to make enough room for a, another lane. So I, I just don't see it without having to take some property from people to do it. Thank you. Okay, last call. Is there anybody in person that would like to make a comment? If you will, oh, you got your card, perfect. You go ahead and say your name. Uh, Jimmy Nussbaumer. Um, I think what most of these people are saying, in my opinion, is your study was done in 2019 and we're moving so fast that it's uh, way behind. And that traffic is so bad at that intersection that it, it's gonna take a major fixing, but I think they need to relook at it since 2019 and see what's going on now. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. We don't have anyone signed up to speak online yet. Uh, we'll just give it a few minutes. If anyone would like to speak online, type into the questions pane. I'd wish I wish to speak and I will call on you and unmute you so that you can provide comment. If anyone else at the venue would like to would like to provide comment, um, please do so now. Uh, you can fill out the speaker card after you speak. Uh, otherwise, we'll give it a couple minutes and then um, pass it back over to you, Megan. All right, we don't have anything coming in online, so I'll pass it back to you at the venue, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. The time is now 624. This concludes the public hearing portion of the meeting, and thank you for coming.